today on Inspiration for the Day. Join Pastor Phil Keaton as he shares a noun word that will speak to your spirit. That means I'm moving, hallelujah, towards the goals God has set before me. I'm achieving them in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you are going to take your faith and you're going to achieve the things the Lord has set before you? Amen. I'm going to believe with you. I'm going to trust with you. And I'm going to achieve with you because we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. Oh, to him who overcomes. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to use you mightily because somebody needs to be inspired. Somebody needs to be helped. Somebody needs to hear a word of encouragement. Realize today that God has called us to have a purity of purpose. How many of you know you, you're made for a purpose? And the pure in heart shall see God. In Revelation 2, verses 25 and 26. Except to hold on to what you have until I come, to the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. See, as we look to God's word, we see that he says that the church here in Smyrna, that he's writing to Smyrna, also Pergamum, and also uh, he's uh, writing to Thyatira. And so as we think about how John has this message burning on his heart, and he said, I know that you're struggling financially. Sometimes you may go through some difficulties in life. That's part of the journey, you know, but aren't you glad that tough times never last, but tough people do? Amen. How many of you know that you're tough today? Amen. You've been through some things. You've had to get through some things. Amen. But the Lord has been beside you, and he's been there to carry you through. And he said, you know, people think that you're struggling financially, but you're rich spiritually. Now, you see, some people say if you're rich spiritually, you'll also be rich financially. Be good if that were always true, but, you know, sometimes people that are very spiritually minded... Their, their focus is on the Lord, and, and so they may not be as wealthy. Other ones will be wealthy because it really doesn't determine it one way or the other. But what God is with us regardless, yes. that's the key. And also, just keep pushing forward and looking for a better day. Amen. Amen. You just got to keep pressing on towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, forgetting the things that are beside, behind me, I press on towards those things which are ahead. I'm not going to let my past determine my future. How many of you know you've got a glorious future and you're not going to let the mud of the past, you're not going to get stuck in the mud. Amen. I'm not going to get stuck in the mud. Amen. One time after church, I was pastoring this church and I went to Sonny's after to get me some ribs and I pulled in, but I, you know how these Florida showers are. Oh yeah. We haven't seen them in a little while, but they're coming. When it rains, it pours. So you know, Sonny's was packed, so I had to park over on the ground. And when I got out, I saw I was stuck in the mud. But I had a congregation with me. Hallelujah. I said, come on, everybody. I said, when I hit say, go, y'all push as hard as you can. Amen. So we got out of there. Amen. I had to get some traction so that I could make it out of Sonny's. Amen. If you're going to get stuck anywhere, though, Sonny's is a good spot. Amen. But, you know, in life, I don't want to get stuck. I want to keep moving forward. Amen. And he's coming to the churches here, and he's saying God has a purpose, purity of purpose. There's a pure purpose. He said, I know your heart. He said, you're rich spiritually. So he's saying, you know, don't look at the material things to evaluate your walk with God. You see, I don't determine how close I am to God by how big my wallet is. Amen. I'm going to draw closer to God. Every time, you know, and that message really doesn't work very well for POWs, you know. Sometimes people that are prisoners of war and, and they're stuck in there. And, and I remember hearing uh, John McCain talk about whenever he was a prisoner of war and how he prayed to God and they would tap on, on the wall. But God was with him, he said. 
in that place of isolation in Vietnam. Thank God for all of our veterans. Let's give all our veterans a big hand. Today. Appreciate what you've done. All of you are heroes. And you think about it. God has given us a purpose. And so he understood his purpose even when he was in that prison. But you know what? Today, we're not in a prison here in this service. But how many of you know some people are imprisoned by different things that get a hold of their lives? The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that raises itself against the knowledge of Christ. Taking every thought, what? Captive to the obedience of Christ. You ever, ever had somebody say, or maybe you said, well, I can't really control the, what I think, how I think. This is just the way I am. Instead of saying, no, I'm going to be proactive, not reactive. I'm going to have a path that I'm going to see myself as who God sees me. Which he sees me as more than a conqueror through him who loves me. So I see myself victorious. Amen. And I see myself in who God says I am. And so I'm not going to, to say, well, you know, I can't take that thought captive. You know, uh, I don't have any control over it. It's like somebody uh, used to when uh, he would say, the devil made me do it. Don't blame me. Blame the devil. Well, you know, the devil can influence us. And here in this, these uh, verses that he's talking to the churches, he says, don't follow the way of the devil. But you know what? You've got to take responsibility for your own behavior because you can take that thought captive. God has given you the armor so that you don't have to be a victim. You're a victor. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've got on the armor of God. Oh, praise God. He said, therefore, having to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then take out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When the enemy comes up against you, you take out that sword. And here in these verses, he says, the Lord comes in with his word as a sharp two-edged sword. Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit of the joint and the marrow is a discerner of the very thoughts and intents of the heart. Everything is laid bare before him with whom we have to do. Everything, you're an open book to God. Amen. So God is coming to you just like he came to these churches and says, Hey, I'm here to do some surgery on you. He's the great physician. Amen. And, you know, I don't like to go into surgery, but, you know, I remember Ryan went in for a surgery and he said, man, I, I came out doing so much better. I've come out of some surgeries doing better. How, anybody else come? I had to go in and get worked on a little bit. Amen. Need to take something out. Amen. But you know what? <laughs> Just remember which arm. Just remember which leg. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mark it up. Amen. But you know, you think about it. The Lord wants to do a spiritual surgery. And what that means is to help us to get rid of anything that's, that's causing us to get stuck in the mud. That's causing us to have a stronghold. That is causing us to have an area where we're imprisoned by our own thinking. Amen. We just got to learn to let things go. Amen. Things that are bothering you, let it go. I'm not going to let the enemy keep on bothering me. I'm going to rebuke him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. I'm going to take authority. Amen. Uh -huh. How many of you know that you have authority in Christ? Amen. 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 Jesus said, behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. So you have power. You have authority. And, you know, I don't like to see people getting jerked around by the enemy and so I got to call it out because I don't like to see anybody getting beat up on amen how many of you know that you just got to call upon the name of Jesus amen he's a lion of the tribe of Judah he's the bright and morning star he said if you overcome you're going to have the bright and morning star you know he's speaking to the church here and he keeps saying to him that overcometh 
when you overcome whatever it is obstacle that you face, then, then that shows the power of your witness. Yes. Yes. When they see you overcome it. Now, some people say, well, you know, during this life, you can, you can live from zero to 90 and never have a pain and never have a problem. But you know what? The Lord spoke to this church and they had some difficulties. He said, you're going to be in a trial for 10 days. You're going to go through some troubles and trials that are part of the journey. But you know what? It's all the way you approach it. How many of you know your attitude is 90% of what counts? 10% you, you can't control, amen, but there's 90% I can always control my attitude. And you say, but preacher, you don't live with so-and-so. But you know, whoever so-and-so is, amen, the Lord can help you to have a good attitude and then, you know, you can't control somebody else. So, you know, how many of you know, even when you get married to people, you're not going to change them into your perfect partner. Amen. Beautiful pastor. <laughs> Your grace is sufficient. You say, God, I need some grace. I need some grace. Amen. But God can help us to learn how to sow good seeds. Amen. And how to, to, to use positive language. And think about the words that we're using. How many of you know that you need to pause, hit the pause button before you say some things? Uh-oh. <laughs> Just hit the pause button and say, wait a minute. Is this going to accomplish what I want it to accomplish? Amen. Or is this going to be shooting myself in the foot? Amen. But you see, the Lord was showing the church that they could, were going to get through the problem. Amen. And they got to focus on the solution. You know, and, and the love of community. That's why it's great to have a, a community in your local church because it's the love of the community also that brings a lot of healing into your life. You know, the relationships that you have. I mean, the Lord tells us to come together and edify each other, to build each other up, to put some healing, anointing oil on that wound that somebody has. Amen. You know, you think about when you give that wound some care and attention, then it can just heal right up. But if you think that you can just forget about it and not do the things you need to do, then you may have a longer problem. See, it's up to you to take a step of faith. Faith without works is dead. You've got to do some works, too. Amen. You've got to get with your brothers and sisters. You've got to let the Lord minister to you and, and, and not be so full of pride that you say, well, you know, there's nothing that, there's nothing that God needs to do in my life because I have arrived. Paul said, I do not count myself as being perfect or having obtained, but this one thing I do. So, you know, if he hadn't made it, then I don't think you and me got, got there yet either. Amen. How many of you know you're a work in progress? Amen. Amen. God is working on all of us. He's stretching us out in some areas. And, and sometimes he's got to go in and do a surgery and get rid of a root of bitterness. A bitter. When you hold unforgiveness, then unforgiveness turns into resentment. Then resentment, if you hold on to resentment and don't deal with it, will turn into a root of bitterness. And when there's a root of bitterness in there, I'm telling you what, it can create a lot of problems for you. It can. Because you know what? It's going to start eating away at you. You know, it's like the person I, who, who has that root of bitterness towards somebody else and it just is, is creating problems for them. And then they think, well, you know what? If I drink strychnine, it's going to get my enemy. The one that did this to me. It's going to hurt him. No, if you're drinking strychnine, 
is hurting you. Be pure in heart. If you if you give me a glass of tea when I come to your house, uh, hint, hint, then then don't mix even one percent of strychnine. You can mix some lemon, but don't put any strychnine in there. I want pure tea. Amen. Amen. See, we need to have a pure heart. Purity of purpose. What's my motivation? What's my purpose? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And when we do it for the right reasons, then the Lord is pleased. Yes. Oh, yes, he's smiling down at you. Because he doesn't wait for your perfection to smile at you. How many of you love to see pictures of Jesus smiling? You know, saying, come on, children, come on up. I want to have a conversation with you. The Lord doesn't have time for you, children. He's a busy man. He said, oh, allow the children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. I love these little ones. He said, I got time. Because you know what? When you look into their eyes, the little ones' eyes, and they see that you care about them. How many of you know that a two-year-old can tell? Amen. Just because they can't talk a lot like you. They know a lot about what you're saying. Amen. So say positive things. Pour into them goodness, love, mercy, and grace. Pour good things into their spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Think on these things. What sort of things are good report and reputable, trustworthy. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So what you think about is very important. So he's encouraging the church. In all these situations, he said, don't get off track. Don't let the enemy come in. Just like, uh, and then he uses the illustration of, of, of Balaam, who was uh, a, a prophet in those days that was not in Judaism. But yet, uh, it sounds like if you study Genesis, he did talk, or Numbers, he talked to the Lord. But he, uh, he also, you know, was trying to... Uh, be friends with Balak who was going against Israel and so uh, so he said don't fall into these temptations that are trying to pull you away from God Amen. you know the priest, priestesses in those temple and the pagan temples you know they had prostitution and it was a temptation for people and so you know he said don't let yourself get into a situation where you're around that temptation so it, it can take advantage of you. You know, he says, use the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Pull that sword out. Say, Lord, I'm using your word against any temptation that comes against me, you know. And so he's encouraging the church. Use your arm. Amen. Don't put it up on the shelf. Some people, got, they say, I got my Bible. It's, it's a family Bible. It's about, it's, it's a big old thing. Two feet by two feet. Well, have you studied it? Well, it's the family Bible. But have you looked into it? Amen. Have you studied the Bible? Study to show thyself approved. The workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, yeah. So, and that rightly dividing means don't take just one scripture and make a whole theology without consulting other scriptures that relate to that same subject. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Somebody said, well, you know, the Bible says there is no God. I said, it does. It says the fool hath said there is no God. Uh -huh. See, but you got to have the whole context. The fool has said there is no God. <laughs> so, you know, take the whole word and then understand the word. And if you don't, find some brothers and sisters who can also help you to explain things to you. And we have our Tuesday group, the ladies and the men. And, and we talk about different things, you know, that, that uh, exploring the word of God together, amen, where there's a lot of input, you know, from all everybody that comes into the group but you know what 
God is wanting to use every one of us, and He's wanting every one of us to use that sword of the Spirit. Amen. The sword of the Spirit is not just for one or two. And, and I've got news for you. They overcame Him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You have a testimony of what Christ has done for you. And they overcame through the blood. Hallelujah. So I got news for you. Whenever the enemy comes up against you and begins to condemn you because of your past, you point him at the blood of Jesus. And you say, if you've got a problem, you go talk to the blood. Hallelujah. Because the blood has covered me and made me clean as the, as the driven snow. As white as snow. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. He said, don't let yourself be taken and pulled out by the spirit of Jezebel, another uh, spirit that wanted to come and, and wanted to kill the prophet Elijah. Oh, yeah. You know, she was after him. He represented God. So she was after him and she entangled at, uh, her husband and used her prowess to, to manipulate him. And so now Elijah's on the run. You know, and there's some people, I mean, some people like to, to, uh, they think a preacher, they think a preacher is a dark horse. They pull out the darts and But you know, that, that's what I mean. They, they're like Jezebel. She was going to kill Elijah because she didn't like what he said. And we know uh, that, <laughs> that Herod also took care of John the Baptist, didn't he? Uh -huh. Because his wife, you know, wanted him taken care of. So, you know, the thing is, is, and that spirit can go male or female. Because what it is, is, is that, that spirit that wants to destroy what God is doing. Even if they say they're of God, but they're doing things that are contrary to God, then it's not what they say, it's what they do. And he said, he complimented them that they had judged and seen that spirit and had dealt with it. You know, you can't let that spirit just linger around. You've got you to gotta fight it. Amen. Because if you don't fight it, then it will bring destruction. Yes. Amen. But you have the weapons. See, that's the verse I was yes. talking about earlier. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not physical, but are mighty. Hallelujah. Say mighty. mighty. Mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Casting down imaginations. That's your thought processes. Uh -huh. You know, how many of you know that you get in trouble when you get to having a problem with stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. So if you start thinking about certain things and you say, wait a minute. I'm not going to let my mind go there. Amen. Have y'all ever heard of a word called gossip? Yeah. Gossip can bring destruction. He said a, a person can use their tongue to create problems by lying about people and saying that this one did this and that one did that. And, and here's the thing. Somebody can lie about anybody in the church. And they could, the enemy could have them deceived so that they think they're doing something good. See, this is, that's deception. You know, if they're taking some information... And then they're passing along information that they don't know for a fact. You know? Then, then that's how the enemy can get in and create a problem. He's, he said it's like you're, you're, he's telling the churches here in Revelation. He's saying, hey, don't fall into this trap. There are traps out there. And don't be... I, I never would want to fall into a trap. Any of y'all that trap animals? You know, who, who would want to feel that clamp on your leg? You know, I mean, not me. I'm not going to let the enemy have any place 
in my life. I'm not going to say, well, I'll give him 5%. I'm giving 95% to the Lord. Amen. you got to give 100% to the Lord, but you know what? And when you don't measure up, it's okay. But the thing is, you're pressing forward towards the mark. Amen. That means I'm moving, hallelujah, towards the goals God has set before me. I'm achieving them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you are going to take your faith and you're going to achieve the things the Lord has set before you? Amen. I'm going to believe with you. I'm going to trust with you. And I'm going to achieve with you because we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. Oh, to him who overcomes, hallelujah, the Lord is going to use you mightily because somebody needs to be inspired. Somebody needs to be helped. Somebody needs to hear a word of encouragement. I was going through the Mexican restaurant one day on the way to get a burrito, and a man came running up to me and said, Pastor Phil. I said, hey, how you doing? And I knew I had never met him, but he had watched our broadcast, and he said, I just had to come and say thank you. Thank you for sharing the word of God. And this is what he told me. He said, the doctor gave me about six months to live. My sugar diabetes was so high. And he said, you know, I was just, had given up and just, you know, I ate whatever I wanted. He said, I didn't really pay attention to it. I just thought, well, what's the use? But he said, I heard something that day. And it got a hold of me. And he said, I said, no, Satan's a liar. And I believe what God has said. And he said, at that point, he started making some changes in his life. And he said, Nat, right now, I feel so much better. I'm doing so much better. And he said, I just want to thank you for sharing the word of God. Amen. 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 Now, I came through a message, a sermon. And these messages, you know, when he says to the angel of the church in Smyrna, you know, angel also means messenger. A messenger has a message. Hallelujah. You've got a message. You've got hope within you. You've got something to give to somebody else who needs encouragement. Somebody needs to know God is with them. Hallelujah. They're not in it by themselves. The enemies come in and said, you're all by yourself. Nobody else cares. But God is saying, I'm with you and I have a whole church of people who love you, who will wrap their arms around you. Amen. We're here for each other because we're going to do the works that Jesus gave us to give and to do. And we're going to keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on trucking. Amen. Somebody else going to keep on trucking. Amen. For the Lord, I've got more to do in the kingdom of God. And I want to have a purity of purpose because it's the greatest purpose. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil, and I just wanted to come to you today and let you know what a joy it is to bring inspiration for the day to you. You know, it's in my heart to share the things that God has put in my heart with you because, you know, that's how God works. He likes to work through people. And so as we share our hearts together, God does inspire us. He gives us stories that lift our spirit to overcome all the obstacles that try to get in our way because we're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens us. So remember that today, you are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you.